Hello and welcome to The Fool and the Philosopher. The Philosopher and the Fool. Australia has had one of the stupidest wars in the world. The Emu War? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, was, I accidentally thought it was the Emo War. Right. Um, which would have been a very different war. But I found out recently that they had... Australia's had another war, which is rather silly. So it requires a bit of history, though, to explain this war. So back when America was having um, the like pride parades and the civil rights for gay people and like gay marriage done, um, Australia, back in two thousand and eight or so, two thousand four, two thousand four, okay. two thousand two maybe, Australia decided that um, they weren't going to have gay marriage, and they had very specific wording, which is it was put in by law that marriage is between a man and a woman, and. This annoyed a lot of people because they had put into legislation that at every single... Sorry, what'd you say? This annoyed a lot of people because they had put into legislation. They had it put into legislation. Yeah. Okay. That you had to say at every wedding, by law, marriage is between a man and a woman. <laughs> so it's like this thing that when you got married, you had to have that put in some way. So that annoyed a lot of people just getting married. It's like, now I have to say this. Also upset a lot of gay people because they saw... There was um, civil rights happening in America they weren't getting. And so a small group of people got together and sailed to a little island off Australia and um, planted a gay pride flag there. And one guy, um, as the emperor of the gay and lesbian island, declared it his own sovereign country. And they declared war on Australia for um, violating their rights as people. And they, like, it's this awful little, like, sandy island, just, like, rocks and sand. But they made posted stamps. They got a national anthem. They made up street names. They, like, got different, like, administrations. And they declared themselves their own nation. So this had very actual little effect. Except for one really funny um, thing, which is... So their flag was the gay fl pride flag. And they were at war with Australia. So they were a hostile enemy nation. And they even like went through the effort of um, sending a declaration of war to Switzerland so they could send it to Australia. So it went through like a different country. So Switzerland basically recognized them and then said, these guys declared war on you as a neutral third party. So the minister of Tasmania, um, or gave for some, I don't know why, but he um, had a flag of like gay pride just to support it. And then at a meeting in Congress, one guy said, I found it incredibly offensive that you had the flag of a hostile enemy nation on your desk. Um, so could you please, like, um, retract it and just say that it's a gay pride flag and not the flag of that nation? Because from all appearances, you are supporting a hostile nation. That is interesting. So you could take... Right, let's say... I there's... don't know if there's still a country, but... Yeah. Let's say there's an organization you hate. Yeah. You could make a country with their flag and like this is you 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 hire like mercenaries basically mm -hmm. to form a country with their flag and commit war crimes and make their emblem a symbol of hatred like a swastika or something and you destroy the movements like usage of that object actually that did happen with um uh well actually too like feminism and Gamers, which is kind of a weird one. Mm -hmm. Both those terms have um, incel is a much more obvious one. Yeah. Words used to describe an organization yeah. have become signs of hate to certain people. Well, here, here's a one I didn't know about. So, um, do you know where spaz comes from? Um, like spastic, like your quick... the spastic society. It was an acronym. Oh, really? Yes. It was a society. It was their word. Then people like, oh, spastic society, you're such a spaz. Because spastic society was for um, ment mental disabilities like um, Asperger's and those things. So it was the spastic society. Then that was spaz. You're such a spaz. Became an insult. Oh, and then well, the what did the spastic society do? They changed their name. But what did the, I mean, what was their organization about? Um, it was supporting people with Asperger's oh, and okay, yeah. um, all this, like, it's basically a society for those people and supporting them as like an institute. Oh, jeez. And so, and it's like the word uh, retard. Well, retard just means slow, right? Yeah. But it was 
um, a descriptive term that then was used to insult like idiot. But like spaz was actually the spaz society. Then it's like everyone's using spaz. This is offensive. We have to change the name of our society. So they changed it, I think, to um, support for because they changed actually quite early on. So it was like support for mentally disabled and Asperger and like that sort of thing. And I think they've actually changed their name again for um, like not mental disability, but like mental difference or something like they they've changed it to just people who are of like a mental difference. Asperger society. You're such an as. <laughs> well, that could happen. Well, um, you know, masochist, do you yeah. know where that comes from? So a masochist is someone who enjoys pain inflicted upon them, right? Yeah. Um, so that was a guy. Mm. Um, his name was um, Masso or Masic or something. Yeah. He was a duke. And he r- wrote a book about um, how he loved um, powerful women, basically. Mm. And he loved them dressing up in furs and, um, and leather. He was like, he, he seemed to be quite into uh, women wearing fur for some reason. Okay. Um, so that was what he did, but there was a lot of rumors about his life and a lot of rumors from the people he was in relationships with. So there was a lot of rumors and he went and wrote a book. Well, well, he also wrote this book, which fed the rumors, basically, that he really loved having women dominate him and like, and, um, uh, yeah, basically treat, mistreat him and, um, overpower him. And so people were like, oh, you're such a... So they called it... Like, he hated the term because he's like, I'm not like that. I just like the furs and I wrote this book and mm-hmm. it's called... Um, oh, I forget what it's called. But so, yeah, he was just really... So other people were mm-hmm. basically taunting him by calling them... Ma- by calling actions masochistic. Yeah. And now it's a word, masochist. And the opposite word, sadist. Yeah. Uh, enjoy inflicting pain on others. Yeah. That comes from the Marquis de Sade who was a, um, well, another duke, um, <laughs> who wrote a book about how he liked the flicky paint. Yeah, but his book is, like, really specific and messed up. Like, he, oh. like, he was, people were not making fun of him. He owned it. Like, this was, oh. like, his, like, treatise on... How to torture people. Yeah, but for pleasure. Uh, <laughs> um, his ode, not the people he tortured. Well, I think there was supposed to... I think there was an idea of reciprocity or something. Um, okay. So he probably identified a, a masochistic impulse at some mm. point in there. But, yeah, no, he, um, both terms um, originally... Well, both terms were names originally. Yeah. But their original usage was originally sexual. Yeah. Um, like, he was doing it for sexual pleasure, and mm-hmm. people were claiming that... Um, the Duke mm-hmm. of Massac or whatever his name was, yeah. was doing it for pleasure as well. Um, but now they've almost transcended to the point of just like pain for the sake of pain, yeah. like, like joy from pain, yeah. which is more like a schadenfreude sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, no, there's just, there's a lot of cases though, of things like, I mean, the, this, that weird thing with the M nation is just kind of like funny. But, um, like, with which words? Sir? Uh, well, just symbols and words, like becoming what they're not. Oh, right. Like, so there's that the gay pride flag. The rainbow yeah. flag is the flag of an enemy nation in Australia. Yeah. And so it's like, excuse me, why are you showing the flag of an enemy nation? And but I mean, there's like the Vandals were a group of people. They sacked Rome. Vandalism comes from a group of people who sacked Rome. Well, the, the gay pride pr- flag yeah. being a enemy nation mm-hmm. has so many layers because mm-hmm. the rainbow is God's promise yeah. that um, he won't flood the earth again. He mm-hmm. won't destroy the earth with water. Yeah. Um, but it's also, so it's a sign of Christianity and they're bond with God. Yeah. But, um, well, not so much anymore, but there was qu- until very recently, mm-hmm. like until like, you know, 12 years ago or so, mm-hmm. 15 years ago, um, Christianity was anti-gay. Yeah. And, uh, Take back the rainbow was a thing, actually. <laughs> and so, and then the word gay itself, um, originally meant joyous, but it was almost never used that way. Yeah. Um, its first, like, popular usage, as I understand it, was actually to mean promiscuous. Mm. And, uh, so, and then a gay was like a prostitute or something. Um, 
And so it's never really had positive connotations with it mm-hmm. until recently again and and early on, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's never really been like, but uh, like happy. Yeah. So, <laughs> but both those and then lesbian, of course, comes from Lesbos, the yeah. the city, or not Lesbos. Uh, uh, it's an island. Yeah, I forget the name. Anyways, um, because there was a poet from there. And she was, like, super pro- prolific uh, writing on lesbian literature. Mm-hmm. And so people were like, oh, you're, like, that person from that place. You're lesbian. Yeah. And I think, I wonder, I wouldn't doubt that most words are like that. Well, so, well, Halloween, um, the, our, one of our neighbors has this amazing house that they um, do a ton of decorations. Yeah. And... One year for fun, I like went there and uh, dressed up as basically Grim Reaper and hid in their graveyard. And people, it was actually a really nice year because there wasn't much snow. And so people were actually wandering to the graveyard and stuff. So if they got too close to the graveyard, I would spook them. And they really liked that. And then two, for two years, I had them. And this year, I was like, I decided to do it again. Because it was like, oh, it'll be fun. I have nothing to do. Got now. coronavirus? Going to go wander around <laughs> in people's yards? No. I was very socially distanced. I was wearing a mask. It was a skull mask, but still a mask. Um, so, a group of kids who um, had probably heard the term used a few times, like I, I suspect they're like in grade eight, maybe grade nine or grade seven. Anyways, they were calling me Karen. And like, whoa, Karen, don't get so angry. The word had lost all meaning to them besides being an insult. Why were you getting so angry though? I wasn't. Karen. <laughs> I, I, I was just like lurching and they're like, oh, they're just using the word. Oh. So it's just a word for them to use. But the word had lost all meaning from the original joke behind it to them. Have you noticed low key has done that as well? Yeah. Like low key as yeah. in like a quieter note. Yeah. So like it's a low key operation as in like people don't know about it. Yeah. To people saying low key, I really like mm-hmm. this music, which... I guess means secretly I like this music. Yeah. Well, there's kind of warped. Or it's like I sort of like this music low-key. Like I low-key like this music. Yeah. Like I'm not going to rave about it, but I like it. Or random. Random used to mean strange. And now it means I don't even know another word for that. Yeah. um, (laughs) Having a chance of something. Like, uh, I don't know. But the word uh, simp had a meaning. Now let's become an insult. Yeah. And, um, like, one that sort of... So, our school that we both went to had the Social Justice Club. Um, and you were in it. Yep. And I was in it for a while. Yep. Um, they stopped making sandwiches, and so there's no point for me being in it anymore. I thought they were a good organization, made came yeah. food for homeless people. Like, yeah. So can't they, complain of that. They weren't allowed to do that anymore because of uh, food safe That's a shame. regulations. But, yeah, I guess. And so... I stopped going to it, but while I was doing it, my friends were like joking, making fun. I was like, "Oh, you're you're SJW. They're calling me that." Yeah. And I was like, "It's just a club where I'm making sandwiches. Like I'm just doing something and like hanging out with some nice people." Um, but then it's like social justice warrior, like that. Like when you first hear that, if you have no context, it's like there's someone doing like they're trying to do something just, like social and just, and they're fighting for it. But that term is a joke now. Yeah. Like, getting called that, you're a joke if you get called that. It was always meant to be an insult. Yeah, but still... It was um, meant to make fun of them, like, oh, you think you're a warrior? Yeah, but, like, even just, like, uh, social justice as well, like, that's sort of, like, become a joke as well. Even though, like, if you think about that word, it's like someone trying to bring about social justice, which... But what does that mean? Well, you think about it a little more, and it's, it's like, like for, enforcing in, your enforce views. equality. Yeah, but also it's your views of what social justice is, and so here's a. It, it's just though, like those words sort of changed as well, and equality has become something that's important for some reason. Yeah. Now this sounds weird, but think about it this way: Would you rather have a society mm-hmm. where everyone is with, has a wealth that's within ten percent of each other, yeah. but everybody's starving? Yeah. Or would you rather that there's people that have a billion times the wealth of the poorest person, but the poorest person has everything they need. Mm-hmm. 
Like, I would rather be in this, this the wealthier society where mm. even the poorest person has everything they need. Yeah. An incredibly unequal society. Yeah. So, a push for, inequ- for equality. Mm-hmm. I think what the push should be for is maximize wealth, mm-hmm. but, um, I mean, okay, with sustainability, because eventually your planet will mm-hmm. run out of resources and die. Yeah. So, maximize wealth and sustainability mm-hmm. as long as... You have a safety net, let's say, yeah. that brings up the minimum to live livable. Mm-hmm. As long as the poorest person in your country has everything they need, mm-hmm. then your society is doing great. Well, so there's that thing, I don't know exact line, but it's like, I'm not a racist, I hate everyone equally. Yeah. If you, if you think about that. You hate everyone. <laughs> well, when we call someone a racist, like that word's... It's bad because they hate a person. Yeah. Yeah, they, we talked like, about this last episode, I mm-hmm. think. But, like, the the level that that can go to of um, equality for all... Yeah. Is if everyone's dead, then they're equal. Because there's this line which is everyone's equal when they're dead. Because we're all in, like, six feet under or whatever. And so maximum equality could be worldwide genocide. <laughs> Just imagine the afterlife and there's, like... The Chinese emperors and the pharaohs lounging in their massive treasure barges, and then everyone else is like, "Yeah, it actually turns out you had to make yourself like a crypt or a home." Like the medieval kings are doing all right in the crypts, but they get a little cramped with all their family members. The Vikings are okay. I've got weapons to take from other people. <laughs> yeah, no, the but Vikings. Are... No, what happened was like there was an Egyptian emperor, mm-hmm. and someone told him, "We're all equal when we're dead," and he's like, "We'll see. About we'll that. see about that." Yeah. But, like, or, it's like, equality, everyone's equally miserable. Like, yeah. But I'm pretty certain there's even been DC villains who want mass equality by, like, mind-controlling everyone so no one can hurt each other. Or, like, yeah. there, there's a plot to, um, a Skyrim quest, which is basically any crime is punished by maximal punishment, which is giant robots coming out of the walls and murdering you. Mm. And so if you commit any crime in that town, the robots will attack you. So you can't steal, you can't do anything. But it's to the point where, like, if someone, like, slaps someone else, that's violence. And so, like, an outburst of emotion. There's a great story. It's called Harrison Bergeron. Yeah. Uh, by Kurt Vonnegut Jr. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's basically society has been made so everyone is equal. Mm-hmm. Everyone has the same wealth. Yeah. Everyone has the same opportunities. Uh, but the problem is, um, people are born unequal. Yeah. Like, some people are born with genetics that make them stronger. Some people are yeah. born with genetics that make them smarter. Yeah. And uh, so, to fix that, um, so the main character is Harrison Bergeron's dad. Yeah. And he's a very smart man. Yeah. Uh, and he's also very strong. Yeah. So, he has a little bell... Uh, sort of attachment to his ear yeah. so that every time he starts thinking hard enough like it reads his brain waves yeah. and the bell starts ringing yeah. in this tinny high-pitched noise that uh, interrupts his train of thought so he can't think properly yeah and he's also forced to weigh uh, wear mm-hmm. massive weights all the time so he he can't lift stuff and he's yeah. he moves around slowly and but his wife has nothing she is mm-hmm. she is the person everyone else is based on she is the yeah. lowest possible person in society yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, She's if, the stupidest and weakest person if, there If you're is. going to do everything by equality, but your only way of getting equality is bringing everyone else down, then your society is going to be on the level of the most lowly, awful person yeah. in your society. The, or not even most awful, the most um, misfortunate. Yeah. And I mean, this is... Like, there's an idea in The Giver as well. It's like, their equality. Like, no one can see color. No one can be happy. Like, yeah, the guy, basically, like, his childhood friend tries to kill him with a drone because it's his job. Yeah. Like, nobody um, in The Giver... Uh, you can't have a family because yeah. family members might love you more than others. Yeah. Um, and this is pretty obvious stuff. Um, but when most people talk about equality, what they're thinking in yeah. their, their imaginary world is that everyone's Bill Gates. Yeah. But we don't have... Or maybe everyone is like me. And so Bill Gates is, they have to give away like 99.99% of their money yeah. to all the poor people so that everyone's like me, sort of. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. Like that, that, is, that is what they're talking about. They're, yeah. they're talking about equality. But I think what you find is that when you hamper, like I, th- I think 
I th why I say I think what you find is I'm pretty sure I've seen that this is what economic models have shown and history has shown. Yeah. Is that when you hem in the richest, you hurt your economy. Yeah. Which might be necessary to keep them in check or to mm -hmm. get taxes out of them. But if you do it too much... They leave. You, you don't... Your country doesn't have the same amount of wealth. Yeah. Um, no matter... Like, the taxes you set yeah. actually determine not only individual wealth, but your country's wealth. Mm. Higher taxes lower your entire country's wealth. Mm. Um, now, I don't know to what degree that is or not. Like, if you say we take 99% of money from the richest people, yeah. then why would you try to be rich? Yeah. Or why would you stay in that country? Yeah. Um, now, if there's something like you take whatever, 40%, 10%, whatever yeah. the magic number is, you give that to poor people who can then take that and turn it into something great, then you might actually raise your country's wealth up. I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah, there's a... Um, so I'm not saying I have an answer for it, but I don't think equality is an obvious... Equality as a goal doesn't make yeah. sense. Well, comfort makes sense yeah. to me. If Next generation, um, a lot of people call, like, communism or, um, like... I'm not exactly like an equal society. Yeah. But in the next generation, um, Picard's brother owns a vineyard. And there's ranks, higher ranks of officers. And there's people but, who are obviously ahead of each other. But uh, everyone has all the basic needs they want. Everyone has all the basic needs. Um, and then humanity's goal is to better yourself. So you're allowed to try to better yourself. Like there's this... Um, in the uh, Picard TV show, there's this, like, one of the few things I've enjoyed from watching the first episode is there's a cadet talking about how um, he used up all his transport credits basically sleeping at home every night. So he's meant to be away at, um, like, the academy learning to become a space cadet. Yeah. And he has, like, an allocation of basically being able to travel anywhere in the world. And he uses this allocation so he can be, every night he can be home with his family, like, have supper with them. So, like... His allowance of being a trainee in school yeah. is he can be on the other side of the world yeah. for his schooling, but always be home with his family. So the the bare minimum you have is amazing in, yeah. the, in that world. So you were saying that you found a board game very frustrating. And so I'm thinking, okay, you don't like this board game. That's a shame. I really like it. But you're trying to claim that frustrating is a good thing, um, which... I think isn't the case. Uh, I think you're probably using the word wrong, or you find it good despite the fact that it's frustrating, or something like that. Because something being good because it's frustrating doesn't really make any sense, unless I'm missing something. Well, it's good despite it's frustrating, but it's also, I'm fine with it being frustrating, because I like things being frustrating, because that means I have to figure them out, or come to terms with it. Do you it mean challenging? Can... Sure, sure, we can go challenging, that's better. Maybe. Okay. Could say it's challenging. Now I find it frustrating that your roll so good. So I don't know. Like if we kept track of every roll I did, I bet it wouldn't be that different from average. Um, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, but it's last night that I, I, I do find the game very challenging. It's also very like, oh no, what do I do? Sort of game. Um, I, I'm I'm using the word frustrating. I think the. Uh, what is frustration? It's like where you're angry at something because you it's preventing you from doing what you want to do. Okay, yeah. Um, maybe that's not the right word then. Because I'm not... Anger is too harsh a word. But it's like, oh, drat, I can't do what I want to do. It's like a... Not anger, but it's like a little blow of us. Like, happy anger. I don't know. Right, so I didn't really want to talk about that, um, but it's something to do with that sort of mindset of happy anger or something. So at uh, Christmas, with our dad and um, his girlfriend, we did a little thing around the fire where it was basically New Year's resolutions, uh, more or less. And what I noticed was that three people around the fire, so everyone but me, said some form or another of wanting to give up on um, laziness. Now, here's the thing. Um, of the three people there, 
I was the only one who wasn't uh, managing under my own power or something. Um, let's put it that way. Like, I I don't have a job to support me or, or I'm not living on my own or something like that. Yeah. Um, but I also think that I am not a lazy person at all. I think I am probably too much of a... Um, uh, I don't take enough breaks or something like that. Um, like, I just go until the job's done. Um, and yet I'm the one without a job. So these, so I, th I think that wanting to give up on laziness, wanting to... Maybe it's like an A-type personality thing, but like needing to be in a mindset of like near a heart attack constantly is a little weird because the three... So none of you three people, from what I know of you, are very relaxed people. And yet you're all saying you need to give up on la laziness and do more. And I think all three of you are probably doing too much as it is. And so I thought it was kind of... Um... All right. So, you know uh, Boyan Band's song, I'm Not Dead? Yeah. Where he says, I wish I could do... Um, be Sorry, I wish I could do what I perceive as priority. Or like is a line where he's like, he wants to do what... He, he wish he could do what he wanted to do. Uh, yeah. No, he wishes he could do what he sees as priority, but he can't because, like, mentally, he, like, sometimes he just doesn't or he doesn't feel like he can do it or, like, he's doing other things. But why is he doing other things? I do know. Okay, why are you doing other things? Because I'm obsessive, and I get obsessed with doing something else. And um, sometimes if I don't do things in the right order, then I can't get the things done. Or if I do things in the right order, then I can get everything I've done I wanted to get done that day so I basically want to do things in the right order and also not stay up super late then sleep in then being sort of funk and stuff and that's sort of why I see his laziness is not um, prioritizing correctly not or not doing things in the wrong order not prioritizing like I, sometimes I'll just watch YouTube videos for a whole day and it's like oh shoot I didn't get anything done and because I didn't get anything done then I work from 6 till 11 and then I'm exhausted and that's really unhealthy then why did you watch YouTube videos all day? Because I'm compulsive and I don't know why I did it. Because it's what I wanted to do at the moment. And I have my computer in my bedroom and it means I can't be at workplace and then go, oh, I have to be doing work right now. And yeah. And it causes weird perspective things. And I'm not sure that... Um, I think that there's a reason we are doing things. And I think, I'm not sure if we can do more than we're already doing. Um, there's that Saturday morning breakfast cereal where uh, they eliminate work. They get robots to take over the entire world and automate every industry. Ex uh, so people are free to do all creative endeavors they want. And so people now have no excuse to say they're tired from work and watch TV when they get home. And so their lives are ruined because all they want to do is sit around and watch TV. <laughs> And, uh, I don't know, it looks, maybe it's because of where I'm coming from, um, but when I see people say, like, I need to make this schedule, do this, do this, do this, I don't want to be as lazy, I don't want to procrastinate, what I get is, like, a sort of, I haven't worked myself to the bone enough, I'm, you know, like, I need to get to that marrow, give me, give me the sandpaper, and, like... No, it's not even, like, I... I, there's certain things I set out goals for myself to have something complete by a certain time. And I basically see the path where I could have completed that thing on the time, but I didn't do that. And that's why I see it's laziness. And maybe I'm saying expectations for myself too high, but I don't think I am. I think I am just not prioritizing what I said I would do. And instead, I'm doing other things. I just Maybe I find it strange that if you want to do something, why haven't you already done it? Maybe that's the, the thing that's... I don't know. Well, it's sort of like, why, why are you depressed? Uh, like, so, like, why haven't you done? Like, why are you depressed? Why? Yeah. Like, sometimes I don't have, like, I don't actually have the mental capacity to do something. Or it's like, I really want, it's like, I haven't made a video yet today. Why haven't I made a video yet today? I, why haven't, like, why haven't I worked on this? And then I don't work on it. It's like, okay, I'll work on this now. And then I just don't. And it's like, why, why am I not working on this? And, like, that happens to me. 
I know you can't do anything right now. No, no, no. I'm just... Apathy makes me so angry. I'm just... I took some calming breaths. <laughs> it's, it's like someone wants to do something and then they don't do it. And I'm just like... Me and uh, Shia LaBeouf, just do it. But um, but when I force myself to do something while well experiencing apathy, um, it comes out terribly, and I feel miserable. So like I feel absolutely wretched, and I don't think it's a good thing I've made. So I think you've actually sort of uh, played into what I said, where. You want to do something, but you don't do it. And you want to do something, something, and you don't do it. Because the mental capacity isn't there. Yeah. How does a New Year's resolution fix your brain? Or uh, not fix your brain even. I don't think there's something wrong. Um, how does a New Year's resolution change anything if the capacity isn't there already? Okay. So how you get burnt out is you don't take time off. Um, so YouTubers who get burnt out are usually working seven days a week for over eight hours a day. Um, and they burn out incredibly quickly from doing that. Um, I don't work that much, but I've thrown myself into a state where I do, where I am constantly don't have anything done, I feel like. And basically I, so I'm living under, uh, stress, um, of like a perceived, I don't know, dagger of Damocles, self-imposed. Um, and so I work on weekends or I work in the evening because I didn't work throughout the day. And then I do that constantly and so I'm exhausted so I don't have the mental capacity to do things but I feel like I have to. And so I put it off until the very end that I do them and I'm mentally exhausted. And so I've done that over and over and over again. So and that also comes from me staying up really late. I stay up really late because I want to do stuff after I'm done working. And so basically I just need to do the things that associate work early on in the day and then take evenings off and take weekends off. But I'm in this weird mental thing and I basically have to restructure my life so I can make it work. So maybe I'm conflating procrastination and laziness um, because it sounds more like a scheduling issue than laziness. Yeah. And so what you're saying is you want to just sort your life out sort of. Yeah, like, like literally sort. <laughs> yeah, well, that's part of also I have found like if I exercise, then I can do a lot more. Like exercise at mid part, exercise in the morning, like just get it done, then I can do it. But there's that hurdle of basically forcing yourself to do it. And once you get into the um, habit of exercising, you can start doing it. But you have to like get that initial boost. And then if you stop one day, it's like, oh, I stopped that day, I can stop another. And then you stop another and another. And so basically you need to get into the habit of doing the exercise in the morning and waking up, getting out of bed and taking care of myself. And don't you find that if you don't, uh, go for a walk every day, let's say, um, you actually feel bad. I do, but I also have stupid giant clunky boots. And so I don't like walking around because it hurts my legs. Do you have shoes? Yeah, but there's snow everywhere. <laughs> my shoes have show shoes have holes in them. Do you have snow pants? No, I don't know where they are. I've looked for them. Big socks. Yeah. I do have those. Big socks are the way to go then. Um, yeah. Because I find I have to... Like, it's not like I have a re regimen of walking every day. It's just, if I don't, then I don't feel good. Yeah. And it's, it's not like, oh man, I didn't walk today. Ah, well, it's like, I need to get out the door right now because... I feel nauseous and I have a headache and I, yeah. I think it might, I think it took me a long time to get to this point though. Mm -hmm. Um, so it took me, let's see, probably five years from about the time I was your age. So yeah. Okay. There's stuff to work out. It's just one of the perks of being older. I guess you, you get stuff sorted out. Of course, that said, there's like two ancients there who want to, <laughs> But one of them was French and like French Canadian. And I think French Canadians are like uh, blue healers or terriers or something. They're just constantly like, go, 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 go. And yeah, I, I, 
I and I it wasn't to uh, pick on you or uh, dad or his girlfriend. It's more that I notice a trend in human life of people simultaneously having no time to do anything, like no time to see friends, or no time to work on their hobbies, the things they enjoy, no time to read. And yet, simultaneously, they are also um, constantly thinking they need to do more and do more and do more. And uh, I think that... And what I meant by give up on laziness is basically sorry on my head that I don't need to do more, I need to do things in a way that actually makes it so I don't go insane. That's why I meant I need to... What I said like give up on laziness is figure out how to sort this whole thing out. And also I saw as part of the way as I have, like giving up on that is like accept that I can do jobs because I did have a month where I did a job and I felt like that was a big accomplishment for me because I don't think I've ever held a job for that long. And so that was like part of it is like I have troubles keeping on doing jobs. I mean, part of the reason why I could keep doing that job is it was enjoyable and healthy and didn't crush your spirit or my body. But still, it, it, it felt like achievement. But yeah, so like I said, I'm not doing that to say anything about you or dad or mm -hmm. his girlfriend. It's, I think that humans in at least Japan and North America are doing too much. And like you're saying, they're not doing the right things. Like, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what your study technique in school was, but mine was to go to bed on time. Uh, like, I, I didn't... I basically never reviewed textbooks or, um, like I'd go over them maybe like briefly and then that's that. Like, uh, and this is a great tip for anyone doing anything. Like you're trying to write a poem, you're trying to create something like a painting, trying to write, trying to, um, no, I, I've found like basically giving up whatever I said, um, like it's, it was the best way I could word it is I want to stop staying up so late. I want to exercise because I have found that if I do those two things, like going to bed at like early, um, or not early, but at a decent time, um, getting up in the day at a decent time and then exercising that I am the person I want to be instead of some cave dwelling goblin man. So I've also noticed something, um, on, uh, boxing day. Mm -hmm. Uh, you we were playing a game early in the morning and you were really out of it at, to start with you, mm -hmm. like that went away after the first like half hour or so yeah and you said you were groggy in the mornings mm -hmm. um, but I was like I got up hour before you maybe mm -hmm. and I was feeling pretty groggy too yeah. like kind of out of it and whatnot I don't normally feel that way yeah so my theory about morning grogginess is actually people that um, wake up feeling groggy haven't slept enough um, because well, I didn't sleep very much that day, mm -hmm. like that night. And I woke up feeling like it took me an hour for adrenaline to basically start running my brain. And then like I could function, but I was definitely functioning less than normal. Yeah. Um, but normally when I wake up, I am just awake. And so I think that, um, yeah, I wonder, I'd be interested to see if, people who aren't morning people or something are just um, not getting enough mm -hmm. sleep. And and it's not always because of their fault. I think that there's probably some people that need those hours of the morning to sleep and they don't get the opportunity to, so they wake up and they feel tired. Yeah. Um, because their circadian rhythm doesn't line up with society's um, typical business schedules or something. Yeah. But I think they might just be tired. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why coffee is so prevalent as well. Um, people need coffee to wake up, and I think they're just running on adrenaline, potentially. Yeah. So, yeah, it's funny, actually, you're saying, like, why are people depressed? Yeah. And it's kind of funny, because um, if someone, like, comes to you and they say, like, I'm depressed, you're like, well, are you sleeping enough, and are you eating breakfast? And it's like, shut up, I'm depressed, I've got a mental problem, and, yeah. and there's nothing I can do, and it's horrible, and I need antidepressants, and it's like, yeah, but are you... Uh, are you uh, sleeping enough? And now a lot of the times I think depression is a symptom and the cause is actually lack of sleep. But that doesn't mean the person can do something about that. Because I think what was causing me to feel so bad for a few years was 
I could sleep for six hours, eight hours, ten hours, and I woke up feeling tired. Yeah. When I changed my diet, um, and I'm not, I'm not saying this works for everyone, mm -hmm. but it worked for me. And when I changed my diet, it was maybe a week or two in, I went to sleep and I woke up feeling incredibly tired. But it was a relief because it wasn't this constant gray thing. It was like, oh, I am exhausted. Like, mm -hmm. like I can sense, I can finally sense my exhaustion. Like my adrenaline system has given up and it's like, you need to rest or something. Yeah. And I slept that day. And when I woke up the next day, it was like, I am regaining energy. Well, I remember you're like, um, you're like, oh, I dance, I get a good night's sleep. And you're like, you felt like you're always behind on sleep yeah. beforehand. Like you were constantly talking like, oh, I'm just like, I haven't ever had a chance to catch up on my sleep. It's basically... Yeah, and if I slept in for like, if I stayed up for an extra hour or two, it was like a few days to get back into the mm -hmm. swing of things. And now, um, I think I'm still fairly sensitive to sleep. Like, if I stay up late the next day, I don't feel great. But the day after that, I'm mm -hmm. like back in it, basically. Yeah. And uh, that wasn't the case before. I'm kind of wondering, actually, this year about New Year's. Like, mm. do you bother staying up for just... <laughs> Yeah. Just go to sleep. Just get it over with. This will probably come out after New Year's. Yeah. So <laughs> welcome, to, if you're listening to this, welcome to 2021. Yeah. And uh, it's not really, time is, no, that's... Hmm. It can only get worse. <laughs> time is arbitrary. Yeah. Making it through the year doesn't matter. <laughs> yep. I think we have New Year's for a reason, though. Yeah. It's a, it's a time for people to renew hope and reset their own um what do you call that like you you can give up on Just reset your spirit yeah you, you can say like look those mistakes that was past me this is a new year new me that sort of thing gonna make all the same mistakes but they're gonna be all new mistakes so that was the other thing about this um new year's resolution thing mm -hmm. it was like a fire ritual thing yeah and i'm never gonna do it again i learned my lesson um because what you had to do is write down on a piece of paper, essentially, mm. something that you're going to give up, yeah. like your laziness or your procrastination or mm. I don't know what, um, and you throw it into a fire to give up on it. Yeah. And then it says, what are you going to bring into the new year? Yeah. Um, I think that resolutions should not be made under duress. I think that if you are suddenly inspired um, or if you have realized something over yourself over a long period of time yeah. and you decide, yeah, this is something I'm going to work towards, that is a great time to make it a resolution. But under duress, what you're doing is you are, um, you are trying to come up with something wrong about yourself. You are trying to think of yourself as a flawed person. Mm. And words have power. You say something, you believe it. Yeah. And, and uh, so... If you look, like I ended up saying overthinking and I regret it because I don't think I overthink things. I think I think a long time about things. Hmm. I don't think that means I overthink them. Okay, and, Perrin. And I think my initial hesitancy was actually um, wisdom and I should have kept to it. Yeah. Because I didn't want to, I didn't know what to think and they were, everyone was waiting on me. So I just said overthinking. Well, now you've cursed your soul and... <laughs> yeah, well, it's like I've now... Now I have said, I think of myself as a lesser person who overthinks everything. And, mm. and then I've also said I need to bring something into the year. And I think that when you do a forced resolution like thing, like before that ritual thing, I was happy with myself. Yeah. Like I am very happy with myself. And then all of a sudden I have to be unhappy with myself. We had to do something like this in high school with the, um, what are those people called? They're like that cult. Um, they, they come in and, and they talk about like, it's like talk challenge about challenge day, challenge day. I it's, didn't do that. It's like, come in, talk about your feelings. Um, say the worst moments of your life, say that all the privileges you have and didn't have. Yeah. And, um, I think it boils back to one of our first episodes, our first one, I think, where I said, mm. you can choose to be a victim or, or you can choose to be strong. Yeah. This is not what talking about your feelings is. Yeah. Talking about your feelings isn't dredging through memories to, to like stir them or to uh, stir them up or create them because of the pressure and hurt yourself with the words you're saying because 
when you say something they're true it's like what's wrong with you well uh, uh i guess i'm sad sometimes and then suddenly you are sad sometimes and you're like oh yeah i'm sad sometimes and i said that and so like you reinforce it every time you notice it from that moment on so now every moment i'm like thinking about something in death i'm like oh i'm overthinking it it's like you are reinforcing your behavior and you are not escaping it and this sort of they're trying to be helpful they're like this is the way to enlightenment or this is the way to happiness basically you you talk about your feelings you work through them but what you do is if the moment is ne comes and it's necessary you don't be a coward and you address it you're like look i am afraid to say what i need to say to this person so let's say it that is the moment when you do it it's not when people are sitting in some sort of bonding circle yeah and saying dredge up something for you to forever stain mm -hmm. yourself with and why i know this is true is that we were taught this sort of thing this um like talk about your emotions dredge up your emotions thing mm. since we were six eight or something yeah. by our dad um and it's like he's read all these self-help books and done all these things and it's mm. always the same thing like dredge it up talk about yeah. these things on and on he has been doing this for the entire time i have known him yeah. And he still hasn't reached that point where he's happy with himself. I changed my way of doing things two years ago. Yeah. And I am very happy with myself now. Well, if something hasn't worked for 25 years, stop doing it. <laughs> There's a game that's come out recently. I don't know if you've seen it. It's, um, someone called it, like, described it as violent Pikmin, which makes me think they haven't played Pikmin. Yeah. <laughs> um, but basically you are a uh leader of a communist revolution and you're trying to overthrow capitalism okay and um now the trailer and the reviews mm -hmm. would suggest that the game's serious like this mm -hmm. is something we want sort of thing but i imagine the game is probably a bit more nuanced or um a bit more of a parody yeah um because I don't is the gameplay gathering swarms of people and yeah then... and then you like send them out to like break stuff and so it's a bit like that riot game. And like destroy cars and stuff and, and yeah. giant robots. Um, because there's this riot game where it's basically you're trying to hold together a riot and you can like choose to be peaceful or violent and like right. you get different amounts of messages sent and you have to like survive yeah. the police for long enough for them to... Yeah, kind of like that, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like a lot more sci-fi, I think. Yeah. Um, but if it is fully serious... Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, where was I going with this? No, it can't be serious because you can't sell a game like that that's serious, basically. Mm -hmm. Because, I don't know, can, can communists sell things? <laughs> like, doesn't that kind of go against their their yeah. whole ethos? Like, but they could be like, well, you need to play the system to survive. Yeah. Um, but that's what capitalism is, I guess. Yeah. And it caused, it forced you to create this game. Like, if you were, would you have created this game mm. in, I don't know, it's weird. Um, in a communist society, I guess you could say that you could be free to work on whatever things you want, but... Well, do, do you remember, um, in... Ah, that's too... Yeah. Edge Chronicles. Um, the founding of that new city that was, like, was away from the capital. The Free Glade? Yeah, the Free Glade. Yeah. Do you remember how there was no money in the founding? Like, you, oh, if you need bread, you go to the baker. It's like a bunch of small communities basically getting together. Right. And they were basically, like, almost communists. Like, it's sort of this unspoken system. And then that, the, like, book ends, like, the founding of the Free Grade. And you go to the next book, and the Free Grade is this giant, horrible city with warring clans, different people, and, like, they actually have a small civil war there. I think communism works really well on a small scale. Hmm. Because it's a commune. Yeah. And everyone contributes what they can, and they... Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, no, that they. Uh, yeah. Well, they actually show like their money became a thing in the free glade, and there's. But it's almost like a, a bad thing in a way. So it's mm -hmm. like, oh, is this what you want from your? I don't know. It's a. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why I brought it up exactly. I guess it's just related to equality. I don't know if yeah. that's a goal. Um, I want to eat now. Maybe yeah. that's why I'm saying nonsense, because uh, I don't want to just like, I don't want to become Sargon of the Cad. Now this is. This isn't, like, too much against him, but he seems to just sort of punch down at dumb stuff now that there's probably a lot more to it if you look into it, and he doesn't seem to... 
like oh what's this person's um life and what's the like why are they doing this what's their message what's their like the or a lot of people like this uh, starfire thing that's coming out mm. i'm not starfire yeah. that could be really good i don't know yeah. because it could be no i don't understand why they'd make her fat mm -hmm. um that that's just kind of weird yeah um but that could be a rebellion as well maybe she hates her mom so much yeah um i don't know why she hates her mom um there's there's a lot of things that don't quite make sense but yeah. things aren't just bad because you're like oh communism's dumb haha like there is a lot of value yeah. to communism there's a there's a lot of value to fascism it's a pragmatist <clears throat> fascism is a pragmatist ideology if something yeah. works do it like we praise china for being able to reverse its um environmental problems yeah that's fascist ideology like mm -hmm. if you have a solution implement it that yeah that is fascism um it it's the people for it's it's similar to communism in that the um people serve the government yeah. although in communism theoretically it's the other way around yeah but um it's never happened that way <laughs> yeah it doesn't seem to it, on like the small scales big scales like case studies like we've had a lot of studies throughout history and it's never gone that way yeah a, lo a lot of case studies yeah yeah um yeah so uh but there, there's a lot of value in basically everything yeah um, at least in exploring it. So I don't want to just like hate on it for it, but I just thought it was, I guess I just thought it was kind of funny that there's a game mm -hmm. getting sold that's pro communism. Uh, yeah. It was just like a little like funny thing to look at. And I don't, yeah. but that said, like the game might talk about that. Like it might have a lot of depth. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, might donate all the money that the game makes to communist organization. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't really make sense. I don't know. Like, shouldn't people just be running the communist organization out of the goodness of their own heart? Well, they, all the money they get is to support the organization. Yeah, but why do they need money? Like, they should just well, be volunteers. They're, they're existing in a capitalist world right now. Yeah, but they, they could just be volunteers. It could be like a club you go to. I guess. As long as you're not sending out pamphlets and whatnot. Yeah. And if you're sending out pamphlets, then all of a sudden you realize that governments need, mon governments need money to implement things. And then mm. all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute. People need to be generating and giving to us. And now people need to serve the government. And, oh, that's where that came from. Oh, okay. So you actually need to serve the government because you need the government to make your roads and you need, need your government. And so that's why communists serve the government, because yeah. the government has to do everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go eat now. All right. And uh, we'll leave it there. Yeah. Chowder. <laughs>